I am John Harmon. I uh, run the R4DS online learning community, and today I'm going to tell you how that community works. Um, this deck is available at r4ds.io slash intro deck. So if you're not able to see my slides or if you want to review it later, it will be there. So the community, uh, you can join at this link, r4ds.io slash join. I'm going to mention that probably several times during this talk to make sure everyone knows how to find it. Uh, if you ever try to use that link and it does not work, um, I'm going to have some contact information later in here because Slack has what they call um, like no time limit sign up links and eventually those expire, which is annoying. They say there's no expiration, but they do. And randomly it'll just stop working. So when that happens, I, I try to, you know, you probably won't see that happen, but if it doesn't work, it's not that you're doing something wrong. It's that Slack is doing something wrong um, and we will fix it usually within minutes. Uh, so there's that link. All right, we were founded in 2017 as a book club for the book R for Data Science by Hadley Wickham and Garrett Grohlmund. Um, there is confusion because of that, that we kind of share a name. We are not associated. Um, Hadley has come to the channel a few times to like do Q and A's and things, but we're not officially associated with him or with uh, our studio. We are an independent thing. Uh, we have 10, 000, about 10,000 members and every week about 700 of those are active. Um, so it, it definitely people come and go, uh, but there's usually um, quite a bit of activity in the, in the Slack. Everyone is a volunteer. Um, it's, all, it's all just a community that kind of somewhat randomly formed, came out of this book club. Um, people kept joining as people learn, they stay to answer questions and we'll talk about how that works. All right, so the thing you might know us for is uh, the Tidy Tuesday project, which is mostly on Twitter. Um, every week, one of our members, Thomas Mock, posts a uh, data set, a clean data set that you can use to practice using R. And I say a clean data set, it's, uh, he has gotten it into a, a rectangular format, but there's often a lot you need to do in order to really find anything interesting. And that's the idea. It's just a free data set for you to play with, do visualizations. Uh, sometimes people build models. Um, both uh, David Robinson and Julia Silge often do like screencasts of their techniques of working with the data set. Um, and so that's just, you know, a project we started and it has been extremely popular. I also do a podcast in theory about uh, Tidy Tuesday. I um, haven't actually recorded a new episode for about a year and a half, but I have some plans. And so hopefully uh, I will soon be doing that podcast again. Um, we also have our help on Slack, which is most of what I'm going to talk about today. And we have our related book clubs, which are also on Slack. So, uh, oh, before I get into the Slack, we do have a code of conduct that um, you can find at r4ds.io slash conduct. Uh, the general idea is uh, we really aim to be open and welcoming and friendly. Um, so, you know, it should be harassment free. If you experience anything, please let me know through the email or through any of the other contact information I have. I have almost never had to do anything to enforce this. We are a very friendly community and it kind of is self-reinforcing because everyone's so friendly, I think, that people, I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly how it works, but it seems to work really well. But if anything happens, please let me know. We have had uh, one or two cases where we had to you know, block someone out of the community and we will we will deal with that as is needed. All right, so like I said, most of what we do is in this Slack team. Um, right now we have 42 channels. There are uh, some general channels that I'll talk about for those, a bunch of help channels, um, some book clubs, uh, some chat channels, which is where uh, this group comes in and some project channels, which kind of overlap with the chat channels. And we'll talk about that a little bit at the end. All right, so those general channels, we have this intros and welcome channel. Uh, it's got a zero on the front there, just so it alphabetizes up to the top. Um, and the idea is that's where you, when you just get started, come in or you don't have to do it exactly the day that you start, but <laughs> when you feel like introducing yourself, come in there and just let us know who you are. 
uh, where you are, how long you've been using R. It's just a way to kind of get to know who's in the in the Slack. It's really nice to see almost every day there are a couple of people introducing themselves in there. And so I, I tend to you know give them a wave on the Slack and sometimes um, you know people will will chime in that, oh, I also live near there or I work on that same sort of problem and here are some things that I found helpful or whatever. So it's it's helpful, uh, often helpful to you to introduce yourself. Um, we have the wins and feedback channel. So the idea there is to let everyone know if something is going well or if you just want some feedback on something. And again, we tend to be a really friendly group. So it's a kind of pain-free way to say, hey, I wrote this blog or I made this visualization or whatever. Um, and people will help uh, you know, give you some feedback about that. Um, we have a uh, conferences channel. Technically, that it, I set up that meet category, um, but there haven't been enough conferences uh, for it to be to need a whole series of channels. So it's just the one channel. We tend to like while there's a conference going on that everyone's attending virtually, it gives another place to chat about that, other than what whatever the conference might um, present. We also use it for meetups like this that um, you can announce them in there, uh, maybe talk about what you saw at a meetup, but that again kind of overlaps with the chat channels. And then we have a, a job board that people post jobs when they're hiring and um, people can post that they're looking for a job. Um, I know a lot of things go through there. I don't actually know if there's uh, been any hires via that channel. And so I, I need to start um, poking people and say, hey, uh, how is that working? But it's there, and there are you know there's a lot of a lot of posts coming through, uh, so you can find out about jobs there. And again, obviously that's like our related jobs. All right, so the help channels. This is the meat of the Slack. Um, they roughly break down by topic, but don't be afraid to post in the wrong channel. A lot of times, people I'll see people say, "Oh, I, you know, I wasn't sure where to post this, so I didn't say anything." It's like, you know, just post it wherever. It doesn't really matter. The purpose of the breakdown is to help you find things related to what you're looking for and to help people like know where to um, kind of browse if you're just kind of trying to see what people are doing. But it, the breakdown isn't really important. All of these channels are monitor monitored by volu yeah, volunteer mentors. And we have a dashboard written in R. Uh, written in Shiny that helps us find unanswered questions. And so it connects to Slack and it shows us, you know, like this over here is that dashboard. We can click the link, it'll take us to that question. And our goal uh, constantly is like this number is too high. We try to get that down to zero where all of the questions are answered. Um, so some tips on that. Uh, when you do ask a question, I don't know if you're familiar or if how many of you are familiar with there's a uh, Reprex package that was put together by the team at RStudio where it helps you give enough information to make sure someone can answer your question. Um, Reprex is, stands for reproducible example. And the idea is try to make your question something that the person trying to answer it would be able to run in their console. Um, it depends on the exact nature of the question, but often providing a small data set, um, you know, getting rid of any extra steps that aren't really related to your question uh, is really helpful um, to, for us to answer those questions. And another part of that is when you take the time to work this out and like figure out exactly how you're gonna answer it, I'd say probably about half of the time you end up answering the question because you realize, oh, this thing that I thought was the problem, when I delete this extra line, the problem goes away. That was actually the problem. So it's useful to do that just for yourself, but also it makes it way easier for people to help you. Um, oh, I didn't mention it here, but there are tips that we have available on the Slack. If you just type exclamation point H-U-H-U, -H -U, which is help us help you, um, that will basically bring up some tips about how to make references and how to how to ask questions. And the other, the other important thing is um, you can type three back ticks or click this code button, or as I learned as I was making this graphic, you can type Control Shift C. All of these will give you a formatted um, code v entry view in Slack, 
and it lets you do multi-line code that doesn't get screwed up. Like Slack might try to remove spaces or it might do other things, might turn things into emojis. And if you're in the code view, it doesn't do that. Um, so that can be really helpful when you're trying to share code. It also makes it easier to copy paste. Um, it's just, it's super helpful, helpful for code. So control shift C. All right. So we also have book clubs. Um, this started, well, obviously the whole channel started as a book club. And then the idea of the book clubs kind of faded away until last March, people were looking for things to do. And someone said, hey, I've been trying to read advanced art. Does anyone want to read it with me? And we started doing these book clubs. Um, we do, so like I say at the top there, there are 16 channels of book clubs. Right now, eight of them have active clubs. Eight of them um, might have active clubs again soon. Um, and we do one hour Zoom meetings uh, with the links appear in the channels 10 minutes before the Zoom meeting. Uh, we have 25 total cohorts have run for 12, I say 12 books, but actually there are 16 channels. So I think I, oh, I added a channel after I made this slide. Um, so there's, I think 13 books now. And then there are a few channels that are just, there's an announcement channel, a channel for helping run the clubs and a uh, request channel. Um, you can find all the past meetings of these clubs at rfrds.io slash YouTube. Um, we have them broken up into playlists and you know you can see here all the playlists. Um, and that's what it was, is I counted the books from the playlists and um, we just started a couple of new books. So uh, it's been a really, um, I don't know, it, it's been a really great way to actually get through these books. Like I had all of these books on my shelf. I don't know how many of them, yeah, you can kind of see over here. All these are books that I would kind of collect and skim through. Um, and now I've been actually reading them with these clubs. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. We also definitely have people who uh, don't join the Zooms. Maybe the times don't work, although we try to spread the times out, you know, worldwide because we know we are a worldwide group. But often the first cohort will end up being more um, often US centric or sometimes US and you know Europe and Africa, but uh, so we do have some for specifically designed for Asia. What um, the whole point being that the time might not work, but the YouTube channel is there, and we find that we tend to have somewhere between thirty and sixty people who clearly are participating in the club, judging by the YouTube views, but aren't necessarily in the um, in the meetings. So it's interesting to see how that works. All right, so the next group is chat, and uh, that is where this group is. We have the chat Africa maps. Um, the idea of all of these channels is to chat with people who um, are using R in similar ways to how you are using R. So uh, we have the Africa maps channel to talk about this project um, we, and, and anything related to uh, mapping in Africa. We have a marketing channel which um, for anyone who works in marketing, we have an NLP or, and sorry, not just works in marketing, but is interested in marketing, has ideas about marketing, anything there. Uh, we have a natural language processing channel where we, we talk about different ways to apply um, R and, and Python in, in all of these contexts. Uh, we have a channel for discussing um, spatial uh, uses in general. So there's definitely some overlap with Africa maps there. So many of you will probably want to chat there. Um, we have sports analytics, supply chain. And then finally, we have that chat for Tidy Tuesday. Like I said, mostly that project is on Twitter, but we also have a channel available for that. And then our final category is this these project channels. And the idea of the project channels is um, so they were to discuss and plan open source projects. There's a very fuzzy line between them and chat. And um, it's possible that these project channels will disappear at any time and kind of merge into chat. Um, we have a general project channel. We have this code review channel that some people were really interested in, and then it has kind of fallen off. Um, we have a project to make a tidy models version of Max uh, Kuhn's book, um, uh, Applied uh, Predictive Modeling. And again, there was some interest and in it has fallen off. And that's why we think we might merge some of these into chat. But if you have a project, um, let me know. And we can always look into 
uh, again, whether that fits in chat or projects. Um, and that's our channels. So I wanted to leave a lot of time for us to discuss. So I am going to pull up the doc in a minute. Uh, again, come to r4ds.io join or slash join. I want to see everyone there. Uh, put, introduce yourself in introductions. And uh, also, you can find us on Twitter. We have r4ds community. I'm John the Geek on Twitter. And um, we have the Tidy Tuesday hashtag on Twitter. That is, if you haven't seen it, it's um, kind of inspiring because people do all kinds of things with this data. And it's amazing to see the diverse ways that people deal with the data from this is my first GG plot to I built this model to predict, you know, who's going to win each medal in the Olympics or whatever it might be. So it, it goes this whole range of things. Um, again, you can email us at r4datasci at gmail, and you can find this deck at r4ds.io slash intro deck.